Hello beautiful souls, I am live in this wonderful space. Um, I'll just give it a few minutes. So I've tagged a few of you who ask to be tagged. Um, so hopefully even if you're missing the live, you'll get to see the replay. Ah, oh yay, I have a, hi Katie. Who else is there? Is that Taylor? Hi, lovely. Beautiful to see you, gorgeous goddesses. Yay. Oh, let's jump into this. Can you guys just drop a comment? Just let me see if I've got my comments on. I think I can see your names. I'm good and I can see comments as well. Hmm. Um, oh, it is saying two comments. Where are my comments? Ah, oh, yep, there we go. There we go. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go see less there. Yep, there we go. Yay! Love you. Oh yay, this is so nice. Oh, I'm so excited to jump into some journaling. Um, just gold and goodness. Oh, I've got oh, there's Georgia too. Hi, lovely, good to see you. Um yeah, because I love journaling. I really, really do. And it's something that I do so on and off. And how interesting is this? Um, I had been journaling flat out this year, which was why I decided to do this topic this month. And I kind of had it planned out a month in advance. And then just the last few weeks, my journaling has completely slipped off and I have suffered. Um, I felt really out of alignment. I haven't felt as inspired and I've just got caught up in, you know, the limiting belief of busy and time and all of that kind of stuff and have just found myself um, not, not creating that space and giving my sp the space that I was to journaling. So I'm really, really excited that I'd planned to do this and I already had this date locked in and everything to dive into it because I actually need this. Like I'm, I'm totally doing this for me as well as for all of you um, to get that inspiration back and to remind myself to really make time for journaling. And this has been so perfect because now I can really share with you um, the incredible impact that regular journaling was having for me over January and sort of midway through February. And then it was around when my daughter started school, I just, uh, routine totally changed and I let my journaling slip. And what I really noticed is a lack of clarity in my thoughts, um, a lack of clarity when I'm going to take action, um, and just less, uh, feeling less congruent with with how I want to spend my time and what I want to do. So that seems like a really good place to start with, um, like I've written here, the why. Like why do we journal? And with doing anything, it is so important to understand our deeper why. And that's my invitation for you today is to start to ask yourself, well, why, why am I interested in journaling? Why was I drawn to this this title of success and mindset journaling and for me there are so many things to be gained from journaling and number one to the why is it's one of the most inexpensive um personal development tools okay so you've got a couple of dollars for your journal and your pen and it can be as little as 10 minutes a day to create amazing results. So that's like number one of my whys. And the other why is it's an amazingly personal way for you to explore yourself and to get a deeper understanding of self. So I think most of you probably know, but we'll just briefly talk about the, the unconscious mind. So I love the iceberg picture, you know, when you've got that picture and the ice, the tip of the iceberg's up here and it's only about 10% of the iceberg and that's like our conscious mind. And so that's like all the chatter that's going on in our head all day and when we're thinking about, you know, like what do I need to do and am I going to the grocery store and don't forget to buy milk and all of that. And then underneath, the other 90% of the iceberg that's under the surface that we don't see is our unconscious mind. And I love journaling because it is a really great way for me to tap in with my unconscious mind and start to uncover things that are going on that I have no idea are even there, that I have no awareness about. 
And the way that I really love to do this is by writing questions. So when, when we hear the word journaling, like for some of us, we might think of the Dear Diary thing, you know, just writing down what to do, or, you know, we might want to journal because we know that it's good for us and we hear that it's, it's good for personal development, but we don't know where to start. And questions are incredible. And what I love to do with questions is I will quite often ask the same question in my journal, physically write it out more than once. And this is how we start to peel back those layers and start to tap into the unconscious stuff. Because what, what happens is our unconscious mind registers that question written out and things will just start to come out into the page. And this is, you know, my biggest why for journaling is figuring out myself and what's going on underneath behavior, underneath self-sabotage, underneath patterns that I become aware of. Um, journaling is my way of, of getting to the bottom of it all. Um, and that question, like writing that question, I have had these moments where I will write out a question like, why is this going on? Or why am I having this thought? Or, um, you know, why am I continuing this pattern? And the first time what comes out, what I will write out in my journal is the things that are in my conscious mind. So I'm doing this because um, of my money fears or I'm doing X, Y, and Z because I have limiting beliefs about time. But that's stuff that I know consciously. And so then once I write out all the stuff that I know consciously, I ask the question again, I write it out again. And it's incredible the things that will come out that are so like seem so left of center that seem nothing to do with where you started. And just by spending, you know, like I said, as little as 10 minutes journaling, I can have these massive self discoveries that then give me insight into, well, what action do I need to take? Where do I need to change? What, um, you know, what healing do I maybe need to do? And so that's really the why in the kind of journaling that we're going to be talking about here. So thank you so much for all of the love. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Casey. Lovely to see you jumping on. Um, so now the how, I kind of went into the, a lot of the how there. But what I want to share with you all today is my personal how of how I journal with three different layers. So when we're talking about healing and personal development, you know, all of us, um, <laughs> that one tip was incredible. Can't wait to hear more. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. <laughs> You'll love this then. You'll love the three layers. So this is something that I just kind of developed myself from taking bits and pieces from just diving into so many different journaling workshops like this, um, using different uh, strategies and uh, ways of um, asking yourself questions. And for me, what I've developed that really, really works is a three layers to journaling. And we so often in the personal development world and when we're on this healing journey, we talk about peeling back the layers. And so I have these three layers of journaling that are all equally as important. And when I just focus on one of these layers, yes, they're incredibly helpful, but I don't get the full healing, the full self-discovery, um, the full transformation that I'm looking for in my why as to why I journal. So the first layer, and I, I have two journals, and so my first layer that I need to release is what I call my shit dump journal. And this is where I let out everything. I'm not trying to be positive. I'm not trying to be anything. I'm not worrying about any of the shoulds of having a positive mindset or an empowering mindset. This is a place and it's just, you know, I just have an ugly exercise book that I dump it all out, that I let it all out, that I write all of the dark thoughts. And this for me, colors are quite significant. And we'll go into that more later, but I always use black pen for it. I don't ever use red pen or purple pen. Red and purple will, um, they play these really cool little tricks on your mind that convince you what you're writing is true. So you wanna make sure that you don't write the shit dump in any color that's gonna convince your brain that it's true. So black is a really good color. It's like I'm getting all the blackness out. I'm getting all the darkness out. And I absolutely let loose and write 
everything, the thoughts that you would never want another person to know that you think, um, the hateful, the spiteful, the jealousy, like all of that, just pour it out onto the page in a nice black pen and then we never hang on to that. So what I do when I finish in my shipped up journal and I get it all out is I rip it out, I rip those pages out, I get the anger out, rip them up um, and I either throw them away or I burn them, which is beautifully significant and symbolic, the releasing of it, because that's what we need to do. And this is something that for me was missing in so many um, journaling routines and personal development routines. I kept trying to put positivity on top of all of this bubbling darkness inside of me. And it, it was like I was trying to weigh it all down and push it all down with, with positive thinking, with positive affirmations and with gratitude lists and gratitude journaling and all of that kind of stuff rather than releasing it. And I started doing this process probably about eight months ago. I just, um, I can't even remember where I sort of picked up the idea, but I actually developed this, this special journal that is my place for just dumping out all the darkness. And it totally evolved my whole journaling process because all of the other stuff that I was doing, the gratitude list and the beautiful, you know, nourishing positive journaling suddenly became so much more effective. So that's my first layer to journaling is to have your, your chip dump or whatever you want to call it journal where you get out all of your dark thoughts and feelings. And then it's really, really important to be releasing those and getting rid of those. We don't want to hang on to that. Then the next layer for me, after I've gotten out just that, that pure darkness and given myself permission and I've released it, the next layer is self-discovery, self-inquiry. And so let me just make sure I've got everything. I've got a few notes. I don't usually check my notes, but yeah. So self-inquiry and self-discovery is the, the second layer. So this is the place where I ask questions. And again, I'm not trying to be positive or I'm not worrying too much about my language or um, the mindset in what's going on. This is where I'm getting to the root cause. You know, this is the place where I'm getting in touch with my unconscious mind and I'm asking, well, why? You know, all of that beautiful purge that I just had in my shit dump, dump journal, you know, what was going on behind that? And I'm going to be sharing lots of journaling questions over the next few weeks in here. So um, keep active and I'll, I'll just be putting some posts out with some journaling questions. But this layer is all about figuring out the why. It's also about figuring out what our goals are. You know, it's just beautiful inquiry where we get to tap into that unconscious stuff and get really clear about what our desires are, what our goals are, what our whys are. Um, yeah, and so that, that's, that's basically that second layer in a nutshell. And we'll be going into that lots more um, over the next few weeks. Then the third layer for me is the manifesting layer. And this is the juicy, amazing, where all of the magic from the work that we've done through purging out all the shit and doing the self inquiry, then we get to bring it into this beautiful place of manifesting. And so I like to, I do this in so many different ways um, and I'll share lots more ways, but you know, it's just something like putting a timer on for five to 10 minutes, having some beautiful manifesting music on. You might like to have your oils or your candles and just setting up a really beautiful sacred space and just writing your vision and diving into that vision and writing it as if now. So, you know, I will write, um, I'm standing on stage and I've got my published book in my hand and I'm about to speak to a beautiful audience of people and I might go into the details about what I can see in the audience and I'll go into all the details of the feelings, like the manifesting journaling, those feelings are so, so important. Writing down everything that you feel when all of those goals and all of those dreams have come to fruition. Um, yeah, and so again, I'll be putting in some beautiful tasking for anyone who'd like to jump on that tasking. Um, oh, there's some more comments. <laughs> Three layers, yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, for anyone who would, wants to jump into some tasking around this stuff, there'll be heaps of that coming up over the rest of the month. 
so those are my three layers. So it's it's my shit dump slash purge journal and then my self-inquiry and my manifesting I do in the same journal. Um, some people like to have three different journals. Um, you know, whatever works for you, whatever feels right for you. Like, like anything that I teach and that I share, I don't believe that there's a right or wrong. This is just my way. Take what feels good for you. Take what works for you. Anything that doesn't, leave it um, and please feel free to take that philosophy into everything that you do in life. So then my bonus layer, my bonus level of journaling is gratitude journaling and gratitude journaling for me and manifesting journaling can very much go into the, the same um, the same flow. Like sometimes I'll just flow for pages where it's it's a gratitude rant and then it's what I'm manifesting and it's what I'm grateful for and then you know, I love mixing the two in. But then, of course, you can do um, doing a gratitude list of 10 things that you're grateful for is just magical to do that daily will change your life. Even if you left everything else and just did the gratitude journaling, um, you, would, you would see great results. Um, one thing that I will say on that is that, again, the feeling is so important. And with all of these different layers, getting in touch with our feelings while we're doing it, I think is one of the most beneficial things that we can do. Even when we're purging, even when we're purging all of that darkness inside us, and this can be a bit scary, but to give yourself permission to feel that darkness, to feel that heaviness, to feel that weight, to feel that jealousy, to feel that anger, and then purge it out, there is incredible healing power in that. And to then release those feelings after giving them full permission to be felt. And that's what my, my purge journaling is all about. It's about giving myself permission and stop beating myself up for having dark thoughts or dark feelings or not being all positive and rainbows all the time. And once I've given myself permission to do that and permission to feel it and release it, then when I move into something like gratitude journey, journaling and manifesting journaling, I can feel those feelings that I've been longing to cultivate so much more easily than when I'm trying to feel gratitude on top of pushing down things that haven't been expressed within myself. So yeah, that's that's all of that. Let me just check these. Um, <laughs> fuck yes to tasking. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. So just checking through these comments a little bit more. Oh, I love that you're, you're all enjoying this and, and getting value. So, so what I thought that would be fun to do in here, considering that I let my own journaling slip the last couple of weeks, is I would like to do a 14-day journaling challenge to do daily journaling, even if it's only for 10 minutes a day. And of course, I'm not going to ask anyone to share their journal pages unless they want to. If you journal something beautiful and you would like to share it, you're most welcome to. But I'm going to do daily posts for the next 14 days, um, just with an opportunity to share on your experience. So I'll be sharing, um, some days I'll share some questions and just little different ways that I journal. Because for me, um, I'm not the kind of person that wants to do something exactly the same every day. I'm sure any of you who saw my my stuff on routine last month will get that about me. I'm feminine flow. I like to change things up. I get bored. I like to keep it creative and interesting. So I'm just going to commit myself here to this space, to showing up daily, sharing about my journaling journey with you and give you the opportunity to share yourself. And I would love for you to all make a commitment to yourself if this feels right and if you would like to <laughs> join the invitation to just journal for 10 minutes a day. And if you don't know where you're starting, I'm going to put some questions in the comments at the end. That's fine. And it doesn't have to be anything. And one of the most important things, you know, when I see clients who just start journaling for the first time um, and, you know, in my business, when people first start journaling, I think one of the really important things is to work out what your expectations of this journaling experience are. So why you're doing it and what do you expect to get from it? Because without clarity as to why we're doing something and what we expect, well, our results can kind of be a bit all over the place. 
But so um, the questions that I've got here, which I'll put in the comments is, why am I committing to journaling? What am I hoping to achieve or discover? All about self-discovery. And when you, when you look at this question, jot down any other questions that come up for you, you know, questions about why am I journaling, because they will be a great journaling prompts. So anytime questions come into your head about yourself or your life or what you're doing, jot them down somewhere. They're, they're gold to journal on. And then, am I committed to this process? So I love questions like this, like how committed am I? Am I committed? What do I need to change? Because this is where once we've done the delving and looking into what's going on, where we can start to make the shifts and change. And so by, by writing down the question, am I committed to this process? You're then putting it down in writing. You're allowing your conscious and unconscious mind to see that in writing. And that really helps you stay committed to your process. So yeah, um, oh, oh, I'm so, so in my feminine flow and a bit like floaty and all over the place today. Um, yes. Oh, uh, 14 days. Of, yes, let's do it. Awesome. Um, Self-pleasure. Amazing. I love you, Goddess Katie. It's so beautiful to have your energy here. Heck yeah, committed. Amazing, amazing. I love all of this commitment. Um, it makes me so excited to, to be able to just share my love of something and see other people stepping up to making that commitment. And, you know, who knows what 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 will happen, you know, maybe this will be the next tool that you want to implement daily, or maybe it won't. Um, but yes, this was what I was what else I was going to say before and I got sidetracked. Um, what's really important when I see people first start journaling is to have that willingness to give it time. So journal is very much like meditating so you can go and put on a guided meditation and you've never ever meditated before and you can put on a 10 minute guided meditation and it can you know it can be nice but it's probably not going to be earth shattering life changing to just go and do one one meditation once or off um, and journaling is very similar like yes you could sit down to your first session of journaling and you could write out some really profound stuff and have some great realizations and never do it again and you know they would still be profound realizations but the power of journaling is very much like the power of meditation it's when we do it consistently um, and make that consistent commitment that the huge life tra transformations can happen. It's, um, you know, the book that I go on about all the time is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and he's very much about those small daily tasks that feel insignificant, but when we do them repetitively over a long period of time, they make a huge difference. And I do believe that 14 days, like when I was thinking about how long to do this for, I was like 14 days is not a long time. Like that's a pretty... 10 minutes a day for 14 days, that's a relatively small commitment. Um, but I believe that it can can create amazing change for anyone willing to do that. So yes, do you have a specific time you recommend doing this process? So yeah, I love this question because it, it's such a personal thing. So 10 minutes, I think, is kind of like a minimum time that you would want to journal. I don't know that you can get a lot of flow um, happening in much less time. I guess it depends how fast you write. <laughs> um, so 10 minutes is kind of like where I encourage people to start at. Um, and especially if they are having any blocks about committing time or limiting beliefs around time, 10 minutes is a nice, easy um you know, kind of container to, to fit it into. For me, my best journaling happens um, 20 minutes to half an hour. And sometimes I'll journal for an hour or two hours. And, you know, it's really about checking in and for me and seeing, well, like, what do I need today? You know, when I've got some really big, heavy stuff, like on Saturday night, I had a whole lot of stuff going on in my brain and I didn't get to sleep until 2.30 in the morning. And that means that I know there's a whole lot of stuff going on in there that needs to be processed. And so for me, I journaled quite a lot the next day until I got to the bottom of what I needed to do. 
so yeah time it's totally up to you but yeah i really like that anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour i think is really good to start to tap into those unconscious layers i used to do it first thing in the morning but um i found that was phenomenal but i don't think it's possible with Nate waking up at ridiculous o'clock each day um yeah so i Again, such good questions. I love your questions, Katie. So someone else actually asked this as well about what's the best time of day to journal? Whatever time, whatever time works for you. Okay, so first thing in the morning, it's great to do things first thing in the morning. And this really came in with the routine stuff last month, you know, doing our gratitude and doing our manifesting and our visualization and our exercise and, and everything. There are heaps of benefits to doing it first thing in the morning. However, for me, it's about weighing up the practicality. You know, Katie, this is that, that mum intuition you know, <laughs> that you need to tap into and just your own intuition about what's right for you about, well, if I'm creating space for my journaling in the morning, am I, am I doing it, not doing something else that is actually better for me in the morning? And because I did this, I started doing journaling in the morning and it didn't work for me because I gave up my walk first thing in the morning and my walk in the morning actually, you know, got my endorphins going, actually raised my vibration. And so for me, walking before I journal works better for me because I'm in a higher vibrational state rather than uh, trying to keep my eyes open while I'm writing. So again, it's it's so personal um, what time you journal. And I love journaling last thing at night. Um, the way that my mind works um, in like kind of sleepy last thing at night, I can have some really amazing aha moments um, quite late at night, quite often if I'm honest about my journaling. <laughs> yes, the slight edge. Um, yeah. Awesome. I think I got everyone's comments. Was there anything else there that I missed? My computer, for some reason, I have to scroll up to see the comments. Like if I don't scroll down, um, they don't just pop up. Oh, but this has been so lovely. So what I'm going to do, because I feel like this is such a um, beautifully broad topic and there's so many different ways in which it can be done and you can tap into your journal, is I've decided this was part one. And so I'm going to do part two next Monday, the 18th at 7.30 p.m. Victorian time. Um, and the following Monday, I will also jump on live again. So that's at the end of our 14 day stint of journaling and that will again be at 7 30 p.m so this was the only daytime one and the next two weeks it will be evenings that i'll jump on but like i said i'm going to jump in here daily and just do a post every day if you'd like to be tagged um, just let me know in the comments even if you're watching the replay and you want to jump on board just drop a comment that you would like to be tagged and i'll put you on my tag list just to give you that opportunity to share daily you know what what's happening for you you know where where do you perhaps struggle with journaling um do you have blocks around it what's working for you um and i'd love to just create some dialogue there between us all and share our journaling journey all right well <laughs> yes we'll always tag you goddess um I think that's everything for today. I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much to all of you for being on the live. It's just so beautiful sharing with this energy live and all the love hearts. Um, I'm so, so, so grateful and I'm really excited to dive into this. And I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to recommit myself to my journaling and share that with you. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for what's to come for all of us. And if you think of any questions about journaling, feel free to drop them in the comments, send me a private message. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do two more lives over the next two weeks. Um, so yeah, let me know what it is that, that you all wanna hear. All right, I'll see you all soon and speak to you soon. Lots of love, bye.